Saint John of Damascus, an Eastern monk who lived in the 8th century, wrote a sober account of dragons, insisting that they are mere reptiles and did not have magical powers. He quoted the Roman historian Dio, who chronicled the Roman Empire in the 2nd century. It seems that when Regulus, a Roman consul, fought against Carthage, a dragon suddenly crept up and settled behind the wall of the Roman army. The Romans killed it, skinned it, and sent the hide to the Roman Senate. Dio claimed the hide was measured by order of the Senate and found to be 120 feet long. It is unlikely that either Dio or the pious St. John would support an outright fabrication involving a Roman consul and the Senate. One of the most popular stories in medieval Europe was the legend of St. George slaying a dragon. Originating in the region of Libya and spread by the Crusaders, the story very likely had some basis in fact. According to the legend, a frightful dragon resided in a swamp and lake near a small fiefdom. In an effort to appease the dragon and preserve their city, the inhabitants fed it two sheep every day. When they ran out of sheep, the people began to offer their children, chosen by lot. On one day, it happened that the lot fell on the king's daughter, and so the princess was tied out at the lakeshore to await the venomous dragon. Just then, the knight St. George chanced to ride past that lake. The princess, trembling, tried to warn George to leave, but he vowed to remain and face the hideous reptile. As the dragon appeared, George charged it on horseback and overcame it with his lance. Quite apart from such popular legends, dragons were described in reputable zoological treatises published during the Middle Ages. For example, the great Swiss naturalist and medical doctor Conrad Gessner published a four-volume encyclopedia from 1516 to 1565 entitled Historiae Animalium. He mentioned dragons as very rare but still living creatures. Ulysses Aldrovandus is considered by many to be the father of modern natural history. He traveled extensively, collected thousands of animals and plants, and created the first ever natural history museum. His impressive collections are today housed in a special wing at the Bologna University, where they attest to his scholarship. This background should give credence to the following incident that Aldrovandus personally reported concerning a dragon. The dragon was first seen on May 13, 1572, hissing like a snake. He had been hiding on the small estate of Master Petronius near Docius in a place called Malinolta. At 5 p.m. he was caught on a public highway by a herdsman named Baptista of Camaldulus near the hedge of a private farm, a mile from the remote city outskirts of Bologna. Baptista was following his ox cart home when he noticed the oxen suddenly come to a stop. He kicked them and shouted at them, but they refused to move and went down on their knees rather than move forward. At this point, the herdsman noticed a hissing sound and was startled to see this strange little dragon ahead of him. Trembling, he struck it on the head with his rod and killed it. Aldrovandus identified it as a reptile, the first of this type that he had seen. The strange creature seemed to be completely harmless. Aldrovandus surmised that the dragon was a juvenile, judging by the incompletely developed claws and teeth. Aldrovandus mounted the specimen and displayed it for some time. It is regrettable that, while many of his museum mounts nicely survived, the dragon mount has disappeared. An old Assiniboine Indian story tells of a war party that traveled a long distance to unfamiliar lands and saw some large lizards. The warriors held a council and discussed what they knew about those strange creatures. They decided that those big lizards were bad medicine and should be left alone. 
However, one warrior who wanted more war honors said that he was not afraid of those animals and would kill one. He took his lance and charged one of the large lizard type animals and tried to kill it. But he had trouble sticking his lance in the creature's hide and during the battle, he himself was killed and eaten. The credible Jewish historian Josephus told of small flying reptiles that lived in ancient Egypt and Arabia and described how the predatory ibis bird halted their invasion into Egypt, for which service the Egyptians revered the ibis. The well-respected Greek researcher Herodotus wrote, there is a place in Arabia situated very near the city of Buto to which I went on hearing of some winged serpents. And when I arrived there, I saw bones and spines of serpents in such quantities as it would be impossible to describe. The form of the serpent is like that of the water snake, but he has wings without feathers and is like as possible to the wings of a bat. In his third volume, Herodotus goes on to tell how these animals could sometimes be found in the Arabian spice groves. He describes their size, coloration, and reproduction. It seems flying serpents were infamous for hanging in frankincense trees. When workers wanted to gather the tree's incense, they would employ putrid smoke to drive the flying reptiles away. Aristotle and several other ancient authors also referenced these flying serpents. Reliable witness reports of flying dragons in Europe were written in the 1600s. Marie Trevelyan records, the woods around Penland Castle, Glamorgan, had the reputation of being frequented by winged serpents, and these were the terror of old and young alike. An aged inhabitant of Penlin, who died a few years ago, said that in his boyhood, the winged serpents were described as very beautiful. They were coiled when in repose and looked as if they were covered with jewels of all sorts. Some of them had crests sparkling with all the colors of the rainbow. When disturbed, they glided swiftly, sparkling all over to their hiding places. The popular 17th century writer Athanasius Kircher wrote how the nobleman Christopher Scherirum, prefect of the entire territory, witnessed a phenomenon written in his own words. On a warm night in 1619, while contemplating the serenity of the heavens, I saw a shining dragon of great size in front of Mount Pilatus, coming from the opposite side of the lake, moving rapidly in an agitated way seen flying across. It was of a large size, with a long tail, a long neck, a reptile's head, and ferocious gaping jaws. As it flew, it was like iron struck in a forge when pressed together that scatters sparks. At first I thought it was a meteor from what I saw, but after I diligently observed it alone, I understood it was indeed a dragon from the motion of the limbs of the entire body. The 16th century Italian explorer Pigafetta, in a report of the Kingdom of Congo, described iridescent flying dragons from the province of Bemba. There are also certain other creatures which, being as big as rams, have wings like dragons, with long tails and long chaps and diverse rows of teeth, and feed upon raw flesh. Their color is blue and green, their skin painted like scales, and they have two feet, but no more. The pagan Negroes used to worship them as gods, and to this day you may see diverse of them that are kept for a marvel. And because they are very rare, the chief lords there curiously preserve them and suffer the people to worship them which tendeth greatly to their profits by reason of the gifts and oblations which the people offer unto them. <laughs>